Hi everyone and welcome to today's Carly and Convo. We are keeping on with the Gladiators theme and we have Wolf with us, well, Michael Van Wyk with us today. So thank you, Michael, for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. We just had a little chat backstage, didn't we? So I have asked you some of these questions already because I was getting too nosy and eager to find out the answers. But <laughs> no people problem. will know you as the big bad guy from Gladiators. You were the bad, you were the villain of the show. Here's a little photo of you there in action. <laughs> but rumour has it, as you just explained to me, you pushed for that narrative yourself because you really, really wanted to play the villain, didn't you? Well, because of the name I was given, because we, we didn't choose the names. We were given the names according to what the, the uh, producers thought we would be appropriate for us. And uh, they chose Wolf for me because I had long hair and a beard at the time. <laughs> and um, I basically thought Wolf, big bad. You know, it's the first thing that comes to mind. And uh, I asked them if I could be the bad guy. And they said, no, we want everyone to be squeaky clean and nice. And I kind of nagged, nagged on them quite a bit and said, look, if I just do it for one show and you're not happy, I'll never ask you again. Uh, I did it for the one show and it took off and it just went from there, really. And it obviously did well because everyone loved you for it. Arguably not one of the biggest icons from the show. But you did just mention there that someone else from the cast wanted to be a bad guy for one episode and they got told off because that was your thing. Yeah, I mean, a couple of guys tried to be bad and the producers pulled them up and said, what are you doing? And they said, we're being bad. And they said, no, no, Wolf's bad. You're good. <laughs> and it was like, oh, it's not fair. But, hey, you know, it, I asked and I, I got given that role. But it's a role that I couldn't basically milk every week because if the opportunity wasn't there for me to be bad, then I couldn't just create something out of nothing. I had to sort of wait for the right opportunity. And I thought, oh, here's a chance for me to be, be bad and have some fun. <laughs> because basically you, you come to a show right you've you've, you've queued up there's 10,000 live at every show uh, you're there to be entertained now just say hang tough for instance okay now say I just swang across I grabbed my legs around a guy and I pulled him down oh wolf pulled down the character you know we mm -hmm. pulled down one of the contenders where's the show yeah if I swang across grabbed him he's not going anywhere then I could sort of like rub my armpits in his face I can pull the <laughs> out of his nose I can you know stick my finger up his nose and rub it in his ear I can do anything I want and he's <laughs> hanging on he can't do anything you know the crowd are in hysterics and they'll go away and say guess what Wolf did he was doing that to this guy and he couldn't you know but you know and then John Anderson of course would pull me up and have a go at me about it and I'd point out to him it wasn't in the rules that I couldn't do that you know so Basically, you know, you, you can have a bit of fun, but I wanted the people to be entertained. So they'd go yeah. home and they'd have something to talk about, an incident that happened on the show. Well, I think you, you know. definitely did that 100%. Was it hard to stay as the bad guy in character and do the sort of growly faces? I would be rubbish. I, I crack a smile at anything. But was it difficult for you or did you find it easy and just get it's not so much, it? Was, it was more of a, a pantomime character. Yeah. So, you know, I could be nice one and be, be bad one I wanted to. And I could basically have some fun with the show, you know. Uh, I had carte blanche really to do anything, which was really nice of producers to do that. And you mentioned earlier on, you were the oldest gladiator going in. You said you were, were you approaching 40s or were you in your 40s? Yeah, when just it just, just before 40, yeah. And, uh, so did that matter to you at all that you were the oldest one in the group? Um, yes, and it was, how can I put it? It was hard for me at the beginning because... I was surrounded by all these beautiful, fit, healthy girls and guys. And there was me, the old timer in the show. And I thought to myself, I sort of, you know, how can I excel in such a fantastic environment? Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys are awesome. What's going to make me stand out amongst them all? And so I went out there and I thought I would be the best entertainer I could possibly be. And because I was a model and actor before Gladiators even came along, I'd done about yeah. 15, 16 commercials and lots of other stuff. I was, from the get-go, I was happy to be in front of a camera. I was relaxed and it wasn't a new experience for me. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've already done TV shows and films and things. So, um, yeah, so I felt very comfortable and it was just a question of giving people entertainment and I thought that would give me longevity on the show, oh, and, which and it did. Which it yeah. did, and you were there for it was eight years. The, the first, well, I was there from the beginning to the end. There was only yeah. three people who did the whole uh, four of us actually did the whole 
uh, nine yards, and that was uh, Saracen and me, who were original gladiators. Lightning and Cobra were so fantastic, but they were reserves at the beginning. Uh, but they proved how good they were and ended up being permanent gladiators. Yeah. So, yeah, they you did. Know, uh, yeah, and then we were there for the whole eight years, basically. Do you think that maybe being the older one, you sort of felt like you had something to prove for the younger ones? Did that make you a little bit more competitive with the younger guys at all when, when it came to... Uh, we were always competitive, whether we were <laughs> young or old. It was like it was personal pride. I mean, if you lost a, a game, it wasn't because you were trying to... It wasn't because I was trying to play to the audience or anything else. I genuinely lost, you know, so I didn't want to lose. I mean, if you had it your way, you'd win every game. But I think there was more pressure on the new guys coming in. Right. Because if yeah. they didn't perform well, they'd be dropped. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, the established ones, you, you weren't safe, but you, you kind of felt safe. Yeah, and you were sort you of fan favourites. Yeah, because you, you already loved. a big fan base. You know, it was, it was, remember, at its peak, we were seeing 19 million, you know, uh, you know, registered at, uh, as watching the show. I'm mean, sorry, 13 million. 13 million. A lot. And yeah. you just told me there, because you're now in New Zealand, aren't you? You said even people yes. in New Zealand were watching the UK version. So it was global. That's right, yeah. Yeah, what you got to remember is that if you compare some of the shows that are out now, some of the top Saturday or weekend shows, they don't even reach 9 million, 10 million. No. So... 13 million at our peak. So it was it was huge. We, I don't think we ourselves realised at the time how big yeah. it was. And between you guys, I know you said there was sort of competitiveness. Was there any rivalry behind the scenes? Did everyone get any sort of arguments, like backstage or anything like that, between between the lads themselves? No, there wasn't. But even if there was, I wouldn't tell you. Ah. <laughs> no, but there no. wasn't. No, we all, we all got on quite well. We all had our different roles, you know. And uh, yeah, you know, it, it was a good bunch of guys. We all supported each other, and uh, including the girls and guys. And it, it was good. Yeah. Now, what would you think fans would think is maybe the most surprising thing about you in real life? So I'm guessing you're not the big bad villain in your real life. I know there's a softer side to Michael. I've seen your Instagram. There's pictures of you with dogs. Uh, there's a nice picture <laughs> with you and your wife. So there is a softer oh, side. Oh, yeah, my, 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 my poor doggy there. He's got a hip problem. Oh. I mean, we can't take him for long walks, but the other one wants his long walks. So oh. what we have to do is go for the long walk. Because I know he can't do the long walk back, I take the pram with me. And I put him in the pram and I wheel him back. Oh. If I didn't do that, he wouldn't get a walk. Oh. You know, so because he, his legs would give out. And, you know, so much easier to push him in the pram while walking the other one and carry him back. So, oh, very <laughs> yeah. cute. Um, what do you think fans would be shocked to know about you in real life then? Is there anything surprising that they wouldn't probably think you do or anything that you're up to? Uh, just I, the character I portray on the show is not it's it's me coming through the character but it's not me you know i'm not i'm not really <laughs> a baddie but <laughs> you know given the chance to have, make fun of someone like on the show or i uh, think of an answer which off the cuff very fast is me i'll do that now and i mean when <laughs> i work out in the gym with my friends we slaughter each other i mean we absolutely call each other everything under the sun you know and uh it's all in good humor and so I carried that humour in the show. And what surprised me about the when we did the Ashes with the Australian show, and it surprised the other gladiators who were there with me, we were totally shocked that they had people with cards holding up and they had to stick to a script. And they said to us, where's your script? Don't you? I went, script? We just say whatever comes out of our head. We just <laughs> we make it up on the spot. And just if you yeah. think of something, you just say it. And if the producers don't like it, they'll take it out when they edit it. Yeah. You know. So you've so got this quick witness was, of Wolf. That is that was you. spontaneous. That was my sense of humour. I remember one time with with Eureka, and it went, good God, I know she was a great sports, you know, to, <laughs> to, to take part in, you know. One day I, I did abysmal on a game, and uh, she said to me, you know, very sarcastically, you were very good, was you? I mean, that was quite pathetic, wasn't it? And then I, I took the mic off of her and I said really loud to the audience, do you want to know why I lost? And they went, yes. I said, do you want to know why I lost? And they were all screaming, yes. And I went, well, just before I came out to do this game, I saw Ulrika backstage with no makeup on. 
and I felt sick. Well, she just stormed off the off the set, you know, and uh, and they kept it. They kept it in. They loved it, you know. When I watched that show, it kept, they kept that in because it was funny, you know. And she laughed backstage about it, you know, things like that. It's you know, it's a good that you know. Same with John Anderson, you know. I, That's what I was um, thinking to bring up actually. So, despite your on-screen clashes, you were actually really good friends in real life, weren't you? I always to go out for meals together and everything is lovely, yeah. But one time, you know, I went into the audience and got some glasses off the guy who was right at the very front. The audience says, can I, can I just have these for a second? I put them on John Anderson. I said, you should be wearing this because you missed what happened out there. I did not, <laughs> you know, just things like that you can do. Or another time he gave me a red card and I ate it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, you know, it's just, you just silly things, you know, but it, people go, he had the red card. Why did you say that? You know, he was disqualified. He had the card. You know, so Brilliant. you know, it's just you just got to do. You these seem things, like you, know? you have a lot of fond memories from back in the day. You seem like full of them. What would you say is like your wildest memory from your gladiator days? Did you ever go out partying with the rest of them, or was it all? No, it was slightly different for me. <laughs> I was going to say, so you uh, were at your different point in your life than I'm guessing the other ones. Yeah, were. Well, well, you know, I wasn't single. I was there with my my present wife. Now we've been together thirty years, but she was my fiance at the time. And she would come to the hotel with me and, you know, at the end of the day, we'd have room service. And when we finished filming the shows and we'd watch a movie and I'd go to bed and I'd be rested for the next day. Whereas I'd come out for breakfast in the morning <laughs> and I'd see girls in evening dresses walking down the corridor of our hotel room. And I'm thinking, oh, some gladiators didn't get a lot of rest last night. <laughs> And they'd be dead at breakfast, lying on the table, going, Oh, I'm in up all right. <laughs> and uh, I thought, Well, you're young, you're single, make the most of it. Enjoy. I don't life. know how they do that and then get up and do those shows the next day. That, that's yeah, it, it was difficult, but uh, yeah, no, good luck to them. They were single, and uh, yeah, no, it, I know you were obviously in a different place. You've yeah. somehow like been shot to all this super fame, but you were also dealing with like becoming a parent. I think you had kids around that time, didn't you? How was that juggling being a dad, no, and then being? Yeah, I well, really had my my son when I when I met my partner. She was twenty three, and I was thirty nine, and um, we met in the gym, you know. And um, it was it was my gym, and she was one of uh, my members, and uh, which I don't normally do, but uh, she was so beautiful, I made the exception. Oh. And um, we, uh, you know, I really had my son from my my previous relationship and uh, he was living in Ibiza with my first partner. We were together for three years and then we parted and she lived in Ibiza with him. He's with me now in New Zealand. He's come and lives with me now. And he's a spitting, a better looking version of me, but <laughs> he's so fit and so athletic. And uh, if you want to hang on a second, I'll just grab him and you'll see for yourself he's like, He's a babe magnet. <laughs> Grab him. Oh, go yeah. for it. <laughs> oh, Chloe's got a question as well. So would you be up for Gladiator's reboot? I am going to touch upon that in a minute, Chloe. So don't you worry. I will I will come to that after we see Wolf's son. I'm quite nervous. Do you think they're going to look alike? Add in the comments wh whether you think they're going to look alike or not. And maybe we can see... If yeah, this is this is more junior. Here we so, go. Super fit, unbelievably fit. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi, Wolf Junior. What is your name? I've not been told yet. Uh, I'm Dean, not just Wolf Junior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he wanted to show you one. Maybe you yeah, become boy. a gladiator one day. Maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. <laughs> super fit. There's lots of muscle ups and ring stuff, and he's very, very fit. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, as you said, it was a very different a version of me. Yeah, that, that was great. Didn't think we we're going to get two of you on there today. So that that was brilliant. <laughs> um, obviously, the show was absolutely huge. How did you deal with getting like so much attention when it obviously it was? You just told us how how many people were watching it. It was kind of it was kind of a, um, it was very surreal because what would happen is I'd go shopping, say to the local mall, and in the end, my wife said to me, "I can't go out with you." It's ridiculous because next minute I had 300 people around me <gasps> and I was just mobbed everywhere I went, you know, and uh, it was crazy, you Bye. know. And I remember when I went to Ireland to in Londonderry to switch the lights on and 
the crowds were just clawing at me in every direction. I was being pulled one way, that went and pulled the other way. And, all clawing, you know, in the end, they put me in a fire engine and took me right the way through the crowds and got me to the stage. Wow. And it was a weird experience because I was just about to say, um, you know, and cut the ribbon and put the lights on and everything for Londonderry, you know, for Christmas. Yeah. And uh, somebody leant across to my left ear and they went, don't forget, it's Derry. And then the guy pulled me to the right. He went, don't forget, it's Londonderry. Oh, no. <laughs> so I went, it's marvellous to be here. And I said, <laughs> I said I thought, I'm, not, I'm not playing politics. I'm just staying kind of in the middle, you know. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Oh, someone, great. Siobhan's got a question. Do you still get recognised as a gladiator? You, you even uh, told me earlier. Yes, I do, fun. yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised I do with all the hair gone now that I'm uh, I'm six, 69, I'm 70 next year. But uh, if I'm running on the beach or something like that, something, people all of a sudden they look at you and they look at you again when you're running all the way back and go, eh, and, and they recognise you, and especially if they're English, you know. Yeah, yeah. but did yeah. you? does it get annoying ever then? Or do you still, did you really enjoy it still? Uh, it's not a question of enjoying, it's a question of being polite and respectful. Yeah. If someone's kind enough to say, you know, oh, can I have a picture with you? Or, you know, you don't want to be, I don't want to use the word, I don't want to be a big A. You yeah. Know, and turn around and say, you know, and give it the, you know, prima donna thing and all that. You know, I'm I'm very respectful and polite and says, you know, of course I will take a picture, you know. And uh, one time, I shouldn't say this in case there's any police watching, but it was quite funny. I was... Um, in a 40 zone and I didn't realize I was doing about 45 48 and I saw the flashing lights behind me and I thought oh here we go what have I done and they, I pulled I got pulled up this is in New Zealand and he, he was very sort of surly and he got out he said you was doing 48 and 40 I said I'm ever so sorry I didn't realize and I was very polite and then he had an English accent you know and then all of a sudden he went are you <laughs> like they say are you and I go yes and he goes Oh my God, he said, Can I have a picture with you? I said, Do I get a ticket still? He went, Oh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, Oh, happy days, you know. Lovely. And, uh, I said to him, he said, he said, My wife's a huge fan as well. I said, Get your wife on the phone, I'll talk to you. He went, Would you do that? And I got his wife on the phone, I was talking to him by the side of the road, <laughs> but he was going to be writing me out a ticket, you know. So it's their discretion, but he was nice enough to let me after the warning, you know. So that, that's lucky, and that's, that's a good encounter. You go in your favor, you know, so. Have you had any bad or strange fan encounters? Like, have anyone ever done anything quite weird at all? I know I spoke to James Hunter the other week, and he said that there was used to be a super fan that made some of you quite uncomfortable and used to stalk you guys. Did anything happen like that to you? Oh, we had lots of stalkers. I just take it in your stride you know they, they're they polite they sometimes they focus on people and it's their center of their universe and it was, it's not for you to take that away from them you know they're harmless but as for anyone being aggressive no never because they well they can apologize when they wake up because <laughs> um you know i used to fight full contact and uh i used to do mma as well and everything you know i wish wish, wish mma had come along mm -hmm. when i'd been younger if it had come along when I was in my twenties and you know early twenties, I would definitely have done that full time as an MMA fighter because um, I loved it and I love full contact kickboxing and all that. But it was it was not my. I got into it very late in life, you know, and then I joined an MMA club over in uh, Elephant and Castle because a friend of mine ran it, and I used to spar with the guys and uh, roll with them, and I'd see those same guys go and fight in cage rage, and I was so jealous. I love those guys to pieces, but I wanted to be there fighting as well. But my wife made a valid point. She said, look, you've got into the sport very, very late. You're very, very old now in respect of uh, these fighters. And uh, if you get a kick in the head and, you know, you could end up, you know, we could end up losing, you know, you've got kids and everything. It's just not worth doing it. Definitely if you're young, she said, I'd be in the front row screaming for you. You know, so. Well, you still some... You've still it's done really fun. well. Even now, I've just looked to your Instagram. You're still super active. You're in great shape. Like, how do you stay motivated when it comes to all that now? Here's a... Yeah, yeah. I just, the only thing is now is for the last nine weeks, we haven't been able to train. All I've got is bands. Oh, oh yeah. I've sold, I've, I've, sold, I've sold my gyms and retired. And uh, all I've got is the bands now. So it's a bit difficult not having weights. Only this week, my son bought uh, an old 
uh, rack and a pulley system, and we're using that in the garage right now here at the batch. But that's our first, and we both said this morning and this, uh, this evening how sore we are because for the first time we've been using weights in nine weeks and uh, our bodies are sore. Wow. And do you think you'd be able to come back to like a revival if they did it again? I know they brought the show back in 2008, but that was just for two seasons. You came back for that, didn't you? But if they did something to celebrate the 30 years, would you be keen in taking I'll be part? With you. I, you know, I would take it in my stride. It's there's there's no game that's really I, I found difficult. You know, yeah. And same as all the other glads. When we spoke about this at some of these uh, uh, comic comms, when we get together like there, there's that picture. You know, we we'll speak to each other. We say, yeah, we could all do it now. You know, I'm fit, I'm strong, I'm healthy. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm ready to do it now. It wouldn't be a problem. That'd be good. So if the invite's out, you're there, no problem. If the invite's out, I'll be the, the swinging yeah. pension. <laughs> uh, I do touch I, upon I, you. I hate, did, with, I hate it with my pension book, you know. <laughs> you did say earlier that there was a little, when you stayed in the Gladiator Hotel, I have heard some stories about that hotel. Obviously not that you was involved because you was tucked up with your wife. Can you share any stories or did you witness anything going on with the other glads at all? Ab so absolutely not. I wouldn't wouldn't say it if I did. <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> there's, because... a, there's a command ring, there's a line, you don't cross it. So. No, I had to ask. If, because if, if, anyone, if anyone says they saw something, then the likelihood is they didn't. But a lot of people exaggerate a lot of situations. Well, you know, they might have spent the night with a few different people, but that's normal for young, healthy guys, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, everyone was you know, in shape. Yeah, it's, not, it's no different if they were in Ibiza or if they no, were... No, no, of course not. ...in a nightclub, you know, they're going to meet someone and spend the night with them. That's, you know, if they're young and single, I can't see I can't see why people should blow it up as something bad. Yeah, no, I only it's say, different. because Eureka yeah. had did an interview and she said that when she was learning her lines in her room that she'd hear everything going on. So I thought I'd just ask because she'd said that recently. But if lips are sealed, everything went on. We, we won't touch. Um, apart from the Comic-Con events, do you ever hear or see from any of the other Glads who stay in touch at all? Yeah, me and, uh, like, me and Cobra were friends before Glad is because from the gym scenes and all that, I know him from, you know, and uh, he lived locally to me. And, um, yeah, we knew each other beforehand. And he's been through quite a few serious operations. And I was really worried about him. He's had two yeah. hip replacements and lots of other joint things and quite he has some serious operations where he's touch and go. So I'm always keeping in touch with him just to make sure he's all right. You know, just to, you know, because he's, he's a friend from before Glad's. And uh, I'm so glad that we were on the show together and we knew each other before. A lot, what a lot of people don't realize is there was five mics on the show. So, and when they said Mike, everyone would look around. So that's why we stuck to our gladiator names. Oh, you, well, know, yeah, so, you know, yeah, it, it made life a lot easier just sticking. Even now, when we talk to each other, I talk to Hunter as Hunter, or he says, Hey, Wolf, or I talk to Cobra, and you know, we always stick to our glad names. Yeah, we spoke to Hunter last week and he, we brought you up and he, he had nothing but lovely words to say about it. And he told us that your favourite drink was actually a pina colada and he loved watching you have a cocktail once. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a really nice guy. He actually, in my opinion, he was the best gladiator. You know, we all like to say we were the best, but he, you know, he, he came into such a young age. Was he 20, 19, 20? We came yeah, 19, he said, when he started. Yeah, he's six foot four, and things like the wall and some of the other events, he was the perfect height, you know. So, uh, talking you know, about so just, some, some events there, we've got a question from Chloe quickly. What was your favorite event? Um, Hang Tough and Pyramid, because it gave me a lot of leeway to have fun on those games. You what know, about I like games where I can sort of uh, have carte blanche to have fun and and mess around and you know but at the end of the day those guys are contenders and they're trying to win a car or a, a money prize so you can't do anything that would jeopardize them winning yeah but at the same time you're not going to give them an easy ride you know you're going to try and stop them as i said when you were pulling the nose hairs and stuff like that that's that's hilarious they were, i was already captured and they weren't going anywhere yeah <laughs> they're hanging on the rings they weren't going anywhere so you know and when it comes, obviously, you've said you'd love to come back. You love keeping in touch with the cast members. What would you say, though, it was the hardest thing about doing the show at that time? Was it the injuries? Was it the manic schedule? Because I think I heard you say it went up to, like, three episodes in one day at one point. Yeah, no, I didn't say that, but uh, I'm sure some of the other glads would have mentioned it. In the beginning, we had we were doing a show every two or three days because 
they were finding out how to set the rigging up, how to go f- transition from one game to the next. Then it was a learning curve. So we had plenty of rest between shows. Then they realized that if they put everything in the ceiling as high as they could, they could lower the games into position so they could be set up a lot faster. Mm-hmm. So basically they got better and better and slicker and slicker the more shows we did. And then, then they introduced international shows, then they introduced celebrity shows and more shows were introduced. So they end up doing three shows a day. So what would happen, say the first show, we'd go backstage and in our changing room, it would be on a wall, it would be a chart and you'd see what sh- games you were doing. You didn't have a choice. It was just, that's what you were picked for by the producers. By the second show, a couple of guys might have got hurt in that first show. And then say you were down for hang tough, but they hurt their shoulder. They'll say, well, I can't swing and I'm down for that. And I'd say, well, I'll do that. Can you do this? Because you can, yes, I can do that because I'm not injured for that. And so by the third show, it would be who can do what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then, so you might end up doing three games, not because you were the best at those three games, but you were the only one that could do those three because the others were all injured. So there were a lot of injuries, yes, you know, and uh, you expect to take those injuries into the next show. And then what would happen is they only had so many reserve contenders. And then if we hurt them, they were running out of reserves. Yeah. So we were told, take it easy on them, you know, and we're thinking, well, we, want, we don't want to lose to them, but at the same time, take it easy on them because we don't want to hurt them because we want them to be good for the next round. And then there's them finishing the soap show going, yeah, yeah, we beat the gladiators. And I'm thinking, no, no, we gave you an easy ride. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we didn't want to hurt you because, you you know, you've got to treat you with cotton gloves because it's cotton, sorry, cotton pad, you know, because we don't want to hurt them, you know? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. But honestly, it's been lovely talking to you. That's all we've got time for today. But it's been brilliant. Thank you so much, Michael. And hopefully next year we'll all see you back together for something for 30 years. Awesome. Thank you. If you could send me a copy or... Even, uh, you know, I'd really appreciate it through my email or Instagram. Yeah, or no, definitely. We'll do that. Thank you very all right, much. To all my fans out there, please follow me on Instagram, Wolf Glad at UK. Thank you. Thank you and very then much. And you see what I'm up to on a weekly basis. Thanks, yep, guys. Bye. Thank you.